Hey there, Nick Genetakis here. In this video, let's talk about a Vim plugin called Indent Lines. Or more specifically for this video, let's talk about not using this plugin. Although I do have it installed now just so we can visualize it over here. So I came to Vim uh, after using Sublime Text and Visual Studio Code for a long time. And one feature of Visual Studio Code and Sublime Text as well, uh, they had this really useful feature where you can see matching tags in an HTML document or any programming document. And uh, this is what we're visualizing over here. So Vim can do this as well, right? So we have this div over here. And if I take my mouse and you can see this little, very subtle gray line, because I like to keep uh, white space visualization things to be not too in your face, because I don't want to get distracted to it, uh, distracted by it, I mean. But uh, you know, if you follow this line down, you can eventually see that, okay, well, you know, this line matches to here, and like this div matches to here. And uh, when I was using Visual Studio Code, you know, that was pretty much like, that was essential. Cause you know, you know the drill, if you're, if you're editing a template, it's like you usually want to select something, you know, where the tag starts and where it stops. But it's, you know, it gets a little bit tricky, especially if the document has more nested divs and it's like more than one page long and you kind of have to scroll down. So, you know, Visual Studio Code will do even nicer things where it's like, if you have uh, a tag selected, I'm pretty sure Visual Studio Code did this. Like it'll actually make this dotted line a little bit brighter. So even if you're scrolling like multiple pages down, you know exactly where you are. And uh, it just so happens that this morning, uh, part of my routine, like after doing support for courses and eating breakfast, working out a little bit, uh, I like to check a couple subreddits and Hacker News and all that fun stuff. And I came across this one uh, post here in the Vim subreddit. And it was like updated from 2019, Vim plugins I like. And ooh, like that's nice, especially from this author. Uh, he's very active in the Vim community and a couple of his blog posts, and this is the blog post from uh, that subreddit. You know, I've used a couple of his blog posts to help me set up some binds for searching. So I knew this was gonna be a, a good post to read. So I, you know, I went through this post and I found this one plugin here that he has here, Indent Line. And I'm like, wow, you know what? I could really use that in Vim. Like I totally need that. And I totally missed that from, from Visual Studio Code. So naturally I went to my uh, VimRC file. I installed the plugin and uh, you know, I made one tweak to the color just to make it a little bit darker. And that's where we're at. And then I was thinking though, well, technically I wasn't thinking like my Vim inner voice came into play and it was like, Nicholas, use the hotkeys. Yeah, I don't know what your inner Vim voice sounds like, but mine's basically uh, like a cringe dragon, if that's if that's how you can describe it, I guess. But uh, it made me think, and uh, you know, I've been using Vim for less than a year, and not everything is commit to muscle memory, but there, I do remember vaguely uh, one hotkey where if you hit the percent key, it'll just bounce you between the opening and uh, the closing portions of a tag. That may have been a custom thing I added to my dot files. You can check that out. I'll leave a link to that in the description. But you know, that's pretty handy, especially if something is on uh, one screen, you can just see the opening and closing like that. Like there's really no need to even see the visual line. And also, you know, if this were to be, you know, beyond one screen's worth of size, maybe I can, uh, I, maybe, maybe I can show that just by zooming in a little bit more. It'll just bounce you down to the point in the file where it is. So, that's pretty useful, but it gets a lot better than that. So let me make it a little bit bigger. Uh, there we go. Well, I guess that's good. So this is where, you know, you can really use the power of Vim. So let's say that I wanted to copy this entire div tag. And, uh, you know, usually if you're going to be copying uh, or selecting a, like an entire uh, tag, usually you want to do something with that, right? Like you want to maybe cut it and then put it into a partial or an include file just to like clean up a template, or maybe you just want to fix the indentation or something like that. Well, with Vim, you can just do VIT, and that'll actually copy the contents of what's in this tag. Not the actual tag itself, but you can see here, like, you know, everything in between this tag, like that's what the I is. It's like in between, I guess you can think of it like that. But uh, Vim also has VAT, where you can do, you know, visually select around the tag, and now you can do whatever you want, right? You can indent it, you can like uh, cut it or copy it if you want. But uh, since we're using Vim here, you know, things get a lot better than that. 
Because now, instead of just visually selecting it, like if you know that you just want to cut this and paste it to a different file, you can just do DIT and that just, you know, deletes in the tag or, you know, it cuts it basically. I'm going to undo that because this is actually like the HTML for uh, my public website. But uh, you can really start using the power of Vim. Or, you know, let's say that you just want to take this and then you just want to do, I don't know, change around tag, like just completely start doing something else instead of uh, what was there previously. So you can start doing some pretty cool stuff very quickly. And that made me really think. It's like, well, I don't really care about visualizing the start point and end point of these tags with this vertical line here. What I really care about is, you know, cutting stuff, visually selecting stuff, like indenting stuff, moving stuff around, replacing stuff. And, you know, once you get into that mindset, it's like, seeing where it starts and stops has no very, very little relevance at all. It's like doing something with it. So that led me to think, and, you know, my Vim inner voice saved the, saved the day there. And luckily it didn't evolve into like 100 hours of tweaking my Vim RC file because, you know, I can keep it in check sometimes. Uh, but yeah, once I realized that, it was like, you know what, I'm just going to delete this plugin and that's it. But then of course, I was like, whoa, there's maybe like a cool video opportunity around this topic. So then I installed it once more just before this video, just so you can see how it works. And, uh, you know, if you want to continue using this plugin, there's no harm in that. But uh, personally, I'm going to be removing it right after uh, I finish this video. So with that said, I'm going to go delete this plugin and call it a day for this video. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And uh, let me know in the comments if you're going to be using this plugin or not. Because, you know, this isn't a case for it's like, oh, you should never use plugins or whatever. Uh, I have like over 40 plugins in my dot .files and I use a lot of them very frequently. Uh, I'm all for optimizing for the 95%. Basically, you know, if I'm going to be coding and developing on my dev box using a tricked out VimRC file 95% of the time or even 98% of the time, then uh, I might as well use what I can that makes uh, my development experience better rather than trying to focus on like the 2% where it's like that one case where you might be SSHing into a server to use Vim. Like that almost never comes up, uh, especially if you're using configuration management tools like Ansible. But uh, that's starting to get off track for this video. With that said, thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one.